G'day guys and welcome back to Vex Plays Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, I've been a little bit delayed on this video, thanks in part to World of Warships having some missions on which required my attention. Um, but today I'd like to talk a little bit more in depth about my smuggler. Um, in my last video I glossed over the combat fairly briefly so that I could cover more content. Um, but as I said today, yeah, I'd like to go a little bit more in depth into how I use my scoundrel in combat, um, the particular abilities and the talents that I use. So at the moment I'm on Balmora. Uh, this place is a level 35-ish planet. Um, Balmora is a hub for arms development in the galaxy and is touted as producing some of the most powerful weapons in the galaxy. And as such, this place is constantly being fought over by the Empire and the Republic. Um, it's a pretty beautiful planet. It's very rocky, um, as you can see all these sort of rocky peaks dotted around the place, and then it's interspersed the with sort of grasslands. So far, this but um, thanks to its history, space is a great uh, place this place is fairly trashed. If I just look around, I mean, you can see these giant anti-aircraft batteries in the background, um, pummeling all these jets which are, are fighting in the sky, the starfighters. Uh, there's wreckage of large starships all over the place. And, I mean, just quickly, if you think that you're ever having a bad day, spare a thought for this guy. His job is to stand here and get sat by lightning all day. Um, Alright, so I'm playing a scoundrel at the moment. Um, so this character started life as a smuggler. Um, at level 10, I got to choose whether I wanted to be a gunslinger or a scoundrel, and I opted for the scoundrel option. Being a scoundrel, I get to use a scattergun, which is like a shotgun offhand, which is used by Backblast here, my special ability. Um, I also get a stealth belt so that I can sneak about the place. And yeah, if I'd gone the gunslinger route, then I would very much focused on um, my ranged attacks and my cover mechanic and sort of doing damage from a distance. But as a scoundrel, um, I'm a close-in fighter. I do still have my, my cover attacks. I've still got charge burst, but they receive no bonus um, talents or abilities buffing them. Um, the core abilities of this build are Backblast, Vital Shot, uh, Quick Shot as a filler, and Sucker Punch as a finisher, more or less. So a lot of the time I'll just be using these four buttons. Um, I still have Thermal Grenade and use that, which is sort of AoE splash damage and a stun on the initial target, as long as it's not uh, immune, an elite mob. And Flurry of Bolts here is just a, a free damage button, which costs no resources but does very little damage. Um, as a scoundrel, my resource is energy, so up here on the top left you can see these five bars. And one of the caveats with energy uh, regeneration is that it regenerates faster the fuller the bar is. So this means that playing a scoundrel and sort of maximizing your damage is all about timing and um, trying to keep this bar within this top bubble up here. So I never want to get below half. Um, as you get below half and the bar goes down, your energy regeneration rate actually becomes slower. So. In situations where you really need to do quick damage and you can just spam your buttons to burst a target down, in the short term that, that won't hamper you, but in longer fights, if you energy deplete yourself, your damage is going to fall right off and you're going to have to either use this ability down here, cool headed, um, to regenerate it, which you can only use once every two minutes, or you're going to have to spend quite a bit of time just spamming flurry of bolts, which really you know, makes your damage drop through the floor. Uh, basic rotation for this guy will be to either start off in stealth or if the fight's already going and you're starting on a new target. Uh, backblast is always your go-to ability, so you need to be behind the target to use this. Um, and one of the other resources that a scoundrel has is called Upper Hand. So every time I use Backblast I'll receive a little buff up here called Upper Hand, and Upper Hand is used by Sucker Punch. Um, now one of the core talents which makes the build work is uh, this one just here called round 2 and this is where if I use my sucker punch on a target which is bleeding then I get another charge of upper hand. 
So to start off, I will always backblast the opponent, then immediately after I'll put Vital Shot on. Now I can then use my Sucker Punch, which will use the charge generated by this button, but because it's bleeding, I will generate another charge. Um, so after that you can immediately use Sucker Punch again if it's a short fight, but the best way to maintain your damage is to space these out. So my two generators here um, have an 11 second and a 10 second cooldown. Uh, so I really need to space those out to keep my damage rolling over time. I do have one ability here called Pugnacity, which I can click to generate a charge of um, upper hand. So you'll see right there, upper hand, plus 20 seconds. So that's in case I, I make a mistake and I end up with a hole in my DPS rotation or any damage in a hurry, I can use that one. Uh, two of the other abilities which are important to doing damage uh, with backblast, which is positional, so I need to be behind. If the enemy is on me, I can use Dirty Kick, which is actually one of the coolest abilities I've ever found in any game. I love it to bits. Um, you line someone up and fair dinkum kick them in the nuts. It's accompanied by this awesome crunching sound, so I'll make sure that I show you that in the future. Um, up ahead when we go and kill some guys. So that allows you to get behind to use backblast. It's also on a, a 30 second cooldown, so I mean you have to use these sparingly, save them for you know when the opportunity pre presents themselves. And the other one is Shank Shot, so this is on a 15 second cooldown. So with these two abilities you should always be able to get behind your target to use backblast when it's off cooldown. Um, this one is not a stun, but it does root the opponent's feet in place. Now they can still turn around to get their weapons on you, but it still counts as being behind them. Um, so yeah, that's more or less my rotation. You just need to balance those abilities and sort of space them out and manage your energy and your upper hand um, along while doing damage. Now I use Corso Reeks as my companion and he's in his healing spec. A really good thing about having a healer as a companion is as soon as the fight starts um, they will start healing you and anything that you haven't touched yet uh, the heals will generate a threat and they'll start targeting your healer which sort of as a rogue type stab you in the back class leaves me free to go about my business and sort of um, take out targets of opportunity in the most efficient order to lower the group's damage and that will allow Corso to keep us both healed up in the event that I do manage to out-threat Corso um, and I have an enemy facing me and I can't get behind them because these abilities are on cooldown, there's one here called Surrender, which I'll just show you the graphic for that. looks quite cool. <laughs> Don't shoot me, I'm not doing anything. And then I proceed to stab them in the back. Um, so that's another tool I can use to get behind my opponents. Alright, so now that we've gone through the abilities, I'll just have a, a quick look at the talent tree. So, talent tree used to be very much, um, you could customise your character greatly, um, you could pick any of the abilities. This of course meant not only could you customise well, but there was also the possibility that you could choose the wrong abilities and you could give your character. So, what they've done now is they've made it far more linear. So as you level, you'll progress sort of down this squiggly line and you'll receive abilities uh, tailored to your spec and so they, they will buff abilities that you have and change the playstyle slightly. So make sure you read up to those to um, work out just how your build works. Every fourth or third level, when you reach one of these uh, sort of triangle nodes, this is when you get to choose one ability out of these right hand panels. Uh, you'll get three per line. Um, I found that the customization with these it doesn't really influence your gameplay as much as it should. These are more or less very clear cut choices between whether you're going to be a PvP character or a PvE character. Um, they'll help you with being slippery or survivable, or that will help you with um, sort of damage. So, um, yeah. Typically speaking, survivability and movement and livability talents for PvP and you'll take sort of damage enhancing ones for PvE. Alright, so we'll go and pick apart some enemies now. One of the things I really love about this class and about this spec, um, I don't have many abilities so it can get a little bit monotonous, but 
Uh, I really like that you can't just run in and just spam your buttons. Um, if you do in any sort of lengthy engagement, you'll run out of energy and you'll be standing there basically just hitting flurry of bolts um, and not doing much of anything at all. So it's, it's a very systematic approach. You have to um, know which order you're going to kill your enemies in, then use your abilities in, a, in an efficient manner, otherwise you screw up your rotation and you end up with big holes in your DPS. So for example, we'll look at these guys. So this is a normal mob, so I can stun him. This is also a normal mob, and this guy has the little blue group symbol. So he'll be immune to my knockdown from this. But he won't, however, be immune to... I can crowd control him with that there. So he's stunned. So I can sneak up behind somebody. Backblast. Vital shot. Put the dot on him, then punch him. So I now have another char uh, charge of upper hand. Back blast. Oh, he's dead. So I'll vital shot this guy right off the bat. And he's choking me out. So I'll just show you this, this uh, dirty kick. I don't know, I don't care what language you speak, but this is pretty brutal. <laughs> so I'm just doing my uh, class missions. As you can see over here, the only quests I have are these purple ones, which are just related to my uh, main storyline. But yeah, just get a load of this planet, would you? It really does look fantastic. Um, just having all these pitched battles going on around you, sort of in the sky, and, and these guns trying to shoot planes down, all the wreckage from ships and the massive craters. Um, I think they do a really good job of making these worlds feel alive. Ah, if you check that out just there, you'll see that in a lot of games, being on a mount and just sort of riding through a combat zone, um, the enemies eventually reset. So having a mount is really a bit of an eye win button. You can just cruise through and not have to worry about it. But in this game, um, the enemies will sort of lock onto you, hit you with explosives or fire missiles at you, and um, actually blow your mount up, which leads to you face planning, and then they catch up with you. So I like that you can't just sort of ride around with impunity. It's, um, it's a good touch. Anyway, before I was so really interrupted, I was talking about the landscape and so yeah, you can see these massive AA emplacements. Which are awesome. And then even these guys here, these are like a giant sea mine, but they're they're on the land, so this is the explosive base. And these prongs here are the um, on the ends have detonators. So uh, these are put in position to stop, you know, like the giant AT&T, the, the Star Wars Walker machines sort of ground um, assault forces from attacking the base up here. You know, they'd come up here, push one of these prongs in and it would explode and kill them. So this place where I'm headed up here is called the Trench. Um, I had a mission to disable a bunch of these jamming towers and then I had to disable um, these shield generators which I've already done. The Empire's forward lines are no walk in the park. As you can see, it's not just a clever name, um, it's aptly called the trench because, well, it's trenches, walled in trenches. So I'll just sneak on through here. Um, one thing this game does really well, as a stealth class, um, they do a great job of making you feel sneaky, so... I can just move through here by putting these guys to sleep or stunning them and sort of sneaking my way through. Um, I've been able to complete sort of entire missions and even sometimes entire planets without engaging in direct combat apart from, you know, quest uh, scripted fights that are supposed to happen. So again, I can sort of stun this guy. Now it doesn't work on droids. Um, so this fellow would see me if I was going to sneak past him, but I do have this ability called Sneak, which for eight seconds greatly increases my stealth. So basically for eight seconds I'm pretty much undetectable which will let me sneak past that guy.
So this is the Belmoran Arms Factory, or one of them at least. And you see sort of these type of walker bots here, this is the sort of thing that those mines out front would be defending against. This is a little bit more open this place, so I'll come on. Actually, while I'm here, I'll take an opportunity to show you uh, the scoundrel cover system. So you see here, I'm in combat You're with right. these guys, and uh, this green icon here shows somewhere that I can take cover. By pressing my F key, I can sort of roll in. But the way it works is, um, you've actually got to keep the, the cover item between you and the enemy. So you see this fellow over here, he has a green shield above, which means that I'm getting the defensive bonus from him. But these guys are off to my right, and they have direct line of sight to me, so they'll hit me every time. Now you can alter this, like, so if I move around here, see there's a, a new template there appears, so I can sort of change the angle I'm fighting on this rock as the fight progresses to keep certain people out of line of sight. And this is back last. That's fairly brutal. Um, I love shooting people in the back with a shotgun at point blank. That's, you know, one of life's little pleasures. So I'm, I'm really enjoying my time still in, um, in SWOTOR. I find the gameplay is, is nice and varied. Just burning through these sort of story missions, it's, it's still taking me quite a bit of time to get them done. Empire um, sure you keep coming across environments like this. I mean, this arms factory. Hand, there's bound to be sweet gear so it looks like these guys are producing missiles of some sort, but they're always sort of varied. In other games like World of Warcraft, where indoor caves and sort of places are, they make them once as a as a template, and then they sort of cut and paste them in. But I've been finding that these sort of facilities um, are always sort of lovingly, lovingly handmade. They're always one of a kind. There may be some instances of uh, sort of cut and paste stuff, but none really stick in my mind, and for the most part they all seem to be really well put together, and um, very individual. So you can see the pink arrow on the map here indicates a doorway that I've got to pass through to get to. Just have to find the thing. I'll zap this guy just because. But yeah, I really enjoy being able to sneak around these planets and, and complete these missions as well. I mean, more or less as a pacifist if you want to, but um, not only is it extra added challenge and sort of alters the game a bit of being able to sneak around, but um, I find a lot of the time with the classes that aren't stealth, um, it can really become quite arduous working through places like this because enemies never, well, hardly ever come in groups of one. If they're a single enemy, they're usually a group enemy or an elite enemy. So you've always got to fight groups of three or four. So being to sneak past them expedites the process and, I don't know, it's fun. As you trip around the place, you will see, like, so this facility will be a home for tons of different class quests. In fact, every class will probably have to stop here at some point, and they all have their own little areas. So, uh, this door down the end here uh, is red to me, so I can't go into that at the moment. Whereas this door here is part of a smuggler phase, so to everyone else this will appear red, but this is one of mine. Which means that I can go in. So yeah, um, anyway I hope that's been a little bit of a look uh, at the combat in SWOTOR and at least what you can expect a little. Um, all of the classes are quite varied and, and the specs will all focus on different abilities so they should still all manage to have around about four to six main abilities, they've been sort of streamlined in that way. So. Yeah, that's about it for this video. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it off there, but um, if there's anything else that you guys want to see, any classes in this game, um, 
any other games, uh, anything that I can do a wrap up of, just let me know in the comments. Um, if you've enjoyed the video today, give it a like or subscribe to the channel, that'll really help the channel out. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching guys, Vex out.